Hey everyone, today I wanted to go over common problems with Red Max backpack blowers, specifically 7500, 8500, and 8550s. These are problems that we encounter, uh, whether they're Red Max issues or just from abuse. Um, so I'll kind of give you some pointers. Uh, if you're looking to buy a new one, uh, kind of what to expect, or if you're looking to buy a used one, what to look for, uh, common issues that come up. So I'll bring you in closer here and we'll take a, and, uh, take a look at everything. All right, so we're gonna take a look at this 8550 here and uh, we'll just go over the common things that we find again. And it may sound like I'm beating up on these units and I'm really not, I'm trying not to. Um, you know, it's like anything, any of these blowers, they all have problems. So, and these are just a few that we encounter with Red Max. Overall, these blowers are solid units. They're really good units. Uh, they hold up really well. Uh, I'm in the Phoenix area, and this particular shop, their customers here, they, they tend to really love these blowers, and they sell the heck out of them. So um, now at first glance, of course, you can see the engine cover is all beat up. This is pretty normal. Uh, a lot of guys, they just they, they beat the heck out of these things. And throwing them in and out of trailers um you know they're they're not nice to them let's just put it that way so so you know it, broken engine covers are common not a big deal you can just replace it they're like 15 bucks so and then another problem that we also encounter a lot with these is the spark plug the engine cover will rub on the spark plug wire basically cutting the spark plug wire in half now Red Max is good about warranting this issue as well, and they will warranty it. So it's definitely something to look for. Um, you know, if you're gonna buy one that's out of a warranty period, you know, you may have to either just repair the wire or replace the coil entirely. Um, air filter bases, this is more of a, just an abuse problem, but a lot of guys will like to use these things for benches or stools um, and they'll sit on it and they'll break the air filter bases. So we encounter this quite a bit where the air filter base is broken. Uh, it'll crack along the mounts in here and underneath at the mounts they will break and then you know and they don't know they don't not paying attention to it and then you get just a ton of dirt ingestion. So, you know, because then they're just sucking in air from underneath the filter. So that's something to look for as well. You know, look for, this one has a little bit of dirt here in the corner underneath the filter, but you want to look for excessive dirt. If this whole air filter base is just loaded with dirt, that means this thing has either had no air filter in it or it's just been, you know, had a cracked housing or whatever, you know, they just, just lack of maintenance and uh, abuse. You know, so you want to look for that. Um, carburetors and the insulator the intake manifolds they do like to loosen up with vibration um, wetness around the carburetor and whatnot is kind of common uh, you will see if you pull this intake boot off of it because of the oiling system with these red maxes they will spit oil back out and this intake boot will have oil in it at times and then the insulators the screws will loosen up and back out and then you'll start to see a lot of leaking down on the engine block and uh, around the intake itself. So that's always something you want to look for. There's four bolts that hold this insulator on, two on the outside, two on the back side back there. You want to make sure that those are there and everything is tight. You can just basically just grab this thing and try to wiggle it, make sure everything is good and tight. So um, recoil wise, they're pretty solid. Um, Every once in a while, you have to, you know, either replace the recoil because of a loose pulley or the recoil pawls on the uh, coil or on the uh, flywheel, I'm sorry, itself uh, will be bad. So it'll, you'll get a little bit of slip in the recoil. Um, fuel lines are okay. The, they went to a newer design now. They're a two-piece. They used to just have one solid piece. Now they have a two-piece design. So inside the tank you want to make sure that inner fuel line is still attached make sure the fuel filter is still attached sometimes guys will just yank the fuel filters out of these things and throw them away and just run them with no air filter and then that clogs the screen in the carburetor tygon fuel line not a big fan of this stuff but you know everybody seems to be using it and it gets it'll get really hard and stiff and they'll start leaking at the grommet 
and because of the ethanol and then the grommets also will shrink a little bit and those will start leaking as well um, another problem common thing that we see with these with the new wiring they changed this uh, split loom although it's not a split loom it's a solid loom but they changed this and they and they made it longer so now the wires are really choked up real high up here and then what you'll see over time I don't, try to get this in the light for you sorry these wires will just start rubbing on the throttle cable and they'll basically just start wearing through and wearing uh, together and then they'll start short circuiting so just check these wires and make sure none of these are just bare metal and and uh, they're not uh, contacting each other and shorting out um, the throttle arms on these are for the most part pretty decent don't see a lot of issues as long as you're maintaining it taking care of it they're fine um, this one, the frame is cracked on it right here, which is a common problem. So if the guys are really pulling on these things and wrenching on them real hard, or they get banged around on the trailer, they will crack the frames right here, uh, as you can see on this one. Another very common problem with these Red Maxes are the leaf guards. They will wear into the volute and wear holes right through it, just the way you see it right there. And it happens on this side, and it also happens on this side as well and again red max will warranty this issue um they will take care of it they're really good about warranting stuff if it's in within warranty range and the customer requests it a lot of our customers they don't care they just leave it or they put duct tape over it and they just let it go so it's not something that really bothers them too much um straps are solid they're reliable they hold up pretty well not not really any issues there the tubes and the flex tubes are good uh they just they get abused they just get absolutely beat to death you know they get drugged through you know along block walls and cactuses and everything else so seeing them taped up like this is very common you know or wire or whatnot if they don't want to replace them or fix them they'll just tape them up and wire them up uh, the swivels and the elbows are really good. They hold up, you know, they're fine. They hold up well. There's a bolt that goes all the way through here and the way the tube is designed. It, this bolt, there's one on the outside and then there's one in there on the inside and that basically is what this tube swivels on are those two bolts. So these bolts will wear out over time um, because of the plastic constantly rubbing on it, but not something you really have to worry about for a very long time. Um, otherwise the mounts and everything else on these are really good good and solid um, so now as far as engine issues with these things uh, the biggest thing with these is the heads will loosen up so you know due to vibration or if guys are not running high octane fuel these things will detonate and then the cylinder heads will start to loosen up and the head gaskets will leak so i've done hundreds of these head gaskets again red max will warranty it not a problem as long as it's within the warranty uh, period so the biggest thing you want to do when you're looking for one of these is you want to take a light and you want to look at the head gasket right there is the best spot just really quick look at that head bolt right there um, if that is completely oiled out and wet soaking wet or that bolt is gone that's a good indicator that the uh, the head is loose um, and it's going to need a base gasket. And another thing to just be aware of is that, you know, how much dirt ingestion happens. So if the bolts are gone, you know, how much dirt did it ingest? So that's one thing to, uh, to be aware of as well. So other than the insulator loosening up and the base gaskets on these, really there's not a lot of issues with these engines. The bottom ends do go out over time, and a lot of it is just because of hours. Just high use, high hours. Um, so I've got another one here on the floor I'll throw up on the bench and I'll show you kind of a, a head gasket issue and a bottom end issue. All right, so this one here we've written off as dead. Uh, it's got a bottom end issue, leaking head gasket issue. You know, and this one just suffered a lot of abuse basically really high hours so um, we typically don't rebuild the bottom ends once the bottom ends go out on these things you know we basically just we write them off 
because it's by the time you do replace the engine housing and the crank bearings and go through all the work and drama it's not much more to just get a new one really so we basically don't even bother with it so okay the recoil is off on this one so if you can if you're looking for one of these used go ahead and pull the recoil off if you can if you're able to um, and you want to check for just a lot of wetness and oil behind the uh, the flywheel here and then if you can just grab this thing and you're gonna lift it up and down I don't know if you can really see it too much there we go that bottom end is just whooped it's done so and then the uh, head gasket as well when you look in there again you can really see how wet and leaking it is you know you'll see it it'll pour all down the side of the block and it's a good indicator that it's leaking over here as well although this side you know could be intake related as well mainly over here if you really see it over here then you know the head is loose or um, bolts are missing or whatever so keep an eye on that but the bottom end that's the biggest thing um, if the bottom end is out I don't recommend it at all you know I mean you can fix it unless you want to put the you know you want to spend the time and money on it so it's completely up to you and then this one here you know is a good example of uh, air filters these air filters are pretty dirty and you can also see a uh, lot of dirt underneath the air filter as well so that's a good indicator of abuse what a lot of guys will do with these things unfortunately is they will take these air filters and they'll either take them out and they'll throw them in a the garbage can or they'll go ahead and take them and they'll just beat them on a trailer or on the ground whatever and try to knock the dirt out of them and with a paper air filter that's like the worst thing you can do so um and then also if you can pull the intake boot off to check it now oil in the intake like that that is very normal for a red max because of the way the oiling system is um, th this is very normal you'll see it build up it'll be a little excessive if the exhaust starts to get clogged you'll see a little bit more than normal but that's all pretty normal and then again you just want to look and kind of see what kind of dirt is in the intake as well so a few things to look out for anyway overall these blowers are really good they just need good maintenance you got to stay on top of the maintenance um, make sure the guys are taking care of them and doing the air filters and doing what they need to do so you know a lot of these guys unfortunately they'll just run them into the ground and as long as they start every day they don't care you know they won't pay attention and they just don't care so you know we try to educate our customers that hey you know get on top of your guys and make sure they're taking care of these things and they'll run a very long time so but yeah so that's kind of what we see and be curious to see what you guys see whatever region you might be in in the country and the problems that you encounter and again these are just some of the things that we encounter but uh yeah any questions uh, let me know thanks for watching yeah, another problem that we run into with these red max something i didn't point out uh earlier that i was as i'm working on this unit is the intake baffles on these units are plastic now what happens is, is these screws that hold it in there's three screws one two and three they will back out and loosen up this baffle gets loose the screws will fall out they will get sucked into the intake and this will result so this one took out the piston and you can see it down into the cylinder there you can see where it came through the intake port there Let's see if I can get it to bear with me here. You can see the screw just peeking out there in the intake. So another thing to look for on these things that these plastic baffles get loose on you the screws start coming out they can get sucked in and cause some pretty significant damage but again red max they will warranty this as long as it's uh as long as it's under the warranty period so one more little thing for you